Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome to my first impression video for the Maya. This is one of the newest civilizations for Civilization VI. It's coming out in the new Frontier Pass, which for all intents and purposes is the next expansion, the third expansion for Civilization VI. Now, it's not coming out as a normal expansion would, you know, all in one big bundle here in a few months. Uh, it's actually going to be spread out over the course of an entire year. Uh, every, like, I think, two months or so, we're going to be getting a new pack that drops that either has a leader or some civilizations or some new game modes or, you know, all of the things in between. Um, the total of the new Frontier Pass is going to have eight civilizations, nine leaders, several new game modes, uh, some new city-states, resources, districts, infrastructure. I mean, all the things you would normally see in a normal expansion. But again, we get bite-sized pieces of it scattered throughout the year, which actually kind of sounds like a really good idea in a lot of ways. It means we don't have to wait, you know, six months, eight months, nine months, you know, whatever, for them to finish an entire expansion and just drop it all, in this, all at once. We actually get bite-sized pieces of it over time, which also allows us to consume it a little bit easier. I mean, this first pack that comes out coming up in May, it's going to have Maya and Grand Columbia, uh, which means I can pick one of those two guys to play as. And then when the July pack comes out that's got Ethiopia, I can try Ethiopia out. Uh, we don't know what the rest of the civilizations are going to be yet, and I'm not going to, this is not officially a review of the new Frontier Pass. I might do one of those later as we get a little bit closer to the launch. But for right now, we're going to take a look at the Maya and see what they have to offer. Lady Six Sky leads the Maya in Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Lady Six Sky's rule of the Maya Empire established a new iron-willed dynasty. She used political savvy and ruthless warfare to bring dissenting city-states back into order. The Maya don't gain extra housing from settling adjacent to freshwater and coasts. Instead, their unique ability, Mayab, provides farms with additional housing and gold, as well as additional amenities for every luxury resource next to the city center. All right, so not getting the initial bonus from settling next to fresh water, at first sounds like a pretty big negative. I mean, th th those are bonuses really add up over time. However, the fact that you can get effectively that bonus, and if not, probably actually even a little bit better from the farms themselves, does give you a lot more flexibility of where you can place your city site. Uh, you don't have to settle next to that river. You don't have to ne settle next to that lake or next to the ocean or whatever, get a couple points of, of housing. You can settle in the middle of wherever and then stick a bunch of farms down pretty easily. I mean, farms are very cheap, uh, just cost you know a, a charge from the worker. Uh, and then you can plop down these farms and be able to get honestly better housing than what you would have gotten with the bonus originally. Uh, looks like if we back this up here a little bit, the farm itself gives one and a half housing uh, per time you put it down versus the one uh, half a house that you normally get with farms. So that's one full house better for every farm that you place down. You're going to want to put down a lot of farms as the Maya. Uh, again, city placement is not as critical for the rivers, that is. But city placement next to luxuries becomes very critical because luxuries next to your capital then give you extra or next to your, your city center give you extra amenities for that city. So you're going to want to place next to those luxuries, which was is why I'm really glad that you lose that uh, kind of that hold have to be next to the river or the lake or whatever, because sometimes luxuries don't show up next to a river or a lake. Sometimes they show up out in the middle of nowhere. And so being able to place your city next to those luxuries, wherever they may be, and ignore that adjacency bonus from being next to uh, fresh water is really going to give you a lot of flexibility. And you're going to need that flexibility, I believe, with some of the other bonuses that the Maya have. The Maya unique unit is the Hulche. This ranged unit replaces the archer and has a higher base strength. They also get extra combat strength when attacking wounded units. All right, so the Hulche here, as we can see, does have the higher base combat strength, which is already going to give them a leg up uh, on a lot of the units. Archers come across at a very critical time. They're the first really good ranged unit. Slingers are just, quite frankly, not that good. They just exist to just, <laughs> honestly, for me, a slinger just exists to get the kill. So I get the reduced uh, research on an archer. That's literally all the purpose they serve. Archers are where it's at where you're going to start being able to uh, do any sort of combat, any sort of warring uh, with those. So the fact that they get the initial extra combat strength is already a huge leg up. But then on top of that, getting additional combat strength when a unit is wounded. When a unit is wounded, you already do more damage to them because they get less relative base strength because they're damaged. In fact, you can see that here in the pop-up. This warrior has 20 base strength, minus five for being a damaged unit. On top of that, the Huche is going to get plus five for the fact that you're a damaged unit. That's a 10 
damage swing, like, like a 10 point swing on the strength overall. So that is significant. And that's something that you're gonna be able to take advantage of quite a bit. Now you're probably not gonna be spreading out your damage, you know, quite so much to weaken units. You're probably gonna wanna zero in on those weakened units already and make sure you take them out, kind of almost like snipe them out of the way, you know, with your archers. Uh, but this is gonna be a fun unit to play with. It's gonna come on at just a, a perfect time to be able to, to expand out and, and really take out some of your nearby neighbors, which you're probably going to need to do to be able to get the city locations that the Maya wants uh, next to luxuries and things like that. The Maya can build the observatory, a unique district that replaces the campus. The observatory boosts science production and gains adjacency bonuses from farms and plantations. All right, so we got the observatory here that, uh, I mean, it's just a normal science district, but it gets adjacency bonus for next nearby luxuries and nearby plantations, or sorry, plantations and uh, farms, I should say. Uh, and so uh, that what that's gonna do is it's gonna really allow you to put your, um, your observatories in certain situations, certain spots that you can surround it with those plantations and and farms, and obviously you have to you can't choose the plantation location. You have to put the observatory next to the plantation, but then you can surround the next of the top uh, the rest of the tiles with farms and really boost up your adjacency. This is going to give you a much better way to get the adjacency that you need uh, pretty early in the game without having to wait for some of the uh, ex uh, districts that take you have to put down. Districts are expensive; they take a long time to put down. You don't get them until later, until your cities grow a little bit to be able to put extra districts down to be able to get more adjacency from that. Farms are cheap. Plantations are cheap. Being able to plop your your observatories down in certain situations to be able to surround them with those types of uh, tiles it is really going to be able to get you an adjacency uh, advantage over any other civilization in the game. Uh, a couple more things we can see on this screen right here. We can see what is that like corn or maize or something like that over here in the, the to the right of the observatory here. Uh, I don't know what the I guess the red is signifying was it that the husk or something like that it looks like corn to me maybe it's something else it could be something completely unrelated to corn but it kind of looks like corn maybe uh, although corn um we see corn on the food icon representation right so maybe this is something else entirely maybe i'm completely off the wall uh, but then over here in the top left corner next to kind of to the left of uh, palinque and to the right of the city breakdown kind of screen i think those are pigs or it's really kind of hard to see. It's a little small icon, but uh, another uh, unique resource that we're getting here in the game. I know we said that they were going to have some new unique resources, some new ones in this uh, first patch. Uh, so it's cool to see a couple of them represented here. Lady Six Sky's unique ability is Ish Matulahau. This boosts the strength of all units and guilds near, but not owned by, the capital. It also means cities placed further from the capital receive reduced rates on all yields. All right, so let's pause on this screen. This is very critical screen. This is all the good information broken down pretty easily here. Uh, we got the, was it Ish Matulahau? Is that how she said it? Um, Non-capital cities within six tiles of the capital gain plus 10% yields, or to, to all yields. That is very significant. Plus 10% just across the board for being within six tiles of your capital is really going to help you you know, in the early game, mid game, late game, just, it doesn't matter. That is a bonus. It's going to carry over. It's going to scale with your, your empire as it continues to grow. The other side of this, um, kind of thing that's called out here that I guess the negative side of this other non-capital cities receive minus 15% to all yields. Those are the ones that are not within six tiles. That's an even bigger deal right here because obviously minus 15% is, is obviously bigger than plus 10%. But the point is, is that you really do not want to have a large sprawling empire as the Maya. Um, you want to be closed in right next to your capital. Um, I mean, the fact that you can put uh, new cities, what is it, within four tiles of, of other cities, you should be able to at least get, for, for sure, you have your capital in the middle, and you should be able to have at least, what, six around within four tiles. And then you might be able to squeeze a couple more in, you know, kind of on the edges somewhere in there. You might be able to get uh, more than the six around your capital. Uh, but uh, whatever the case is, it's not going to be a huge area. Uh, and it's going to be something that you're going to have to really pre-plan. If your capital starts off on the edge of the coast, you probably want to re-roll the game because that's not going to give you a lot of opportunities to surround that capital with quite the right city placement. You really want your capital to be in the middle of a large landmass, you know, continent or something of that nature to be able to surround it effectively. I mean, if there's some islands around you, it might work, but that's going to be a lot harder to pull off, I think, than having like a continent map and something of that nature. Uh, the other thing about this is that it does force all of your cities within that six tile radius, which means, uh, you know, entertainment complexes and uh, industrial zones within that capital radius with, with, from, from your capital will emanate out to give you that, that uh, their, their bonuses to all of your cities. Because effectively, if you've done it right, all of your cities are within six tiles. So that's going to be an easy way for you to kind of make sure that all your cities are covered by those types of resources and, and like the power plants and things of that nature. Um, 
the other thing about this is that you probably aren't going to expand out into other areas of the map um, that are further away from your capital unless you're just really in a position where you're like, you know what? Uh, I'm snowballed so much that even if I get negative bonuses to these new cities, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to expand out, take these cities, accept the negative penalty because I'm already snowballed to a point where I can just win a domination victory pretty easily. So uh, more than likely, she's not going to be domination as her first and primary focus because you really need to make sure those city placements are in the right spot. I can see some early game domination because you want to take out those cities that are near you within that six tile radius that are maybe in a bad location or that belong to another civilization. You're like, no, I want that. That's within six tiles of my capital. I need that location for me to give me my, that, that bonus. So early conquest I can see, but I think as soon, as soon as you establish that six tile radius, you probably settle in for a, a different type of victory type, like a science victory type or something of that nature. Uh, then we have the Maya up here. We already talked about this a little bit. Settling adjacent to fresh coast, fresh water and coast do not provide extra housing. Each farm provides an additional plus one housing, which is awesome, and plus one gold. That's actually a pretty good, awesome bonus there. I mean, let's say you have like three or four cities early on and you put, you know, three farms next to each one of them to kind of get them a little bit of growth. You're already getting what, you know, 12 gold per turn extra just from those, uh, those extra uh, early city, early farms, early uh, things that you play down. That's 12 gold just from your farms. That's not counting other gold you get elsewhere. That's going to add up and that's really going to help you kind of really establish your, your base, your foundation, your infrastructure. Uh, and the plus you gets plus one amenity for every luxury adjacent to the city center. Now this is going to be a little bit harder to take advantage of sometimes because uh, you know it's not always going to be that you can have three luxuries with a spot right in the middle of them that you can put a city, but you can at least be next to at least a luxury and having that little bit of extra, especially since your cities are going to grow probably a little bit taller than most civilizations with the uh, all the, house, the, the extra housing and the farms that you're going to be laying down. You want all the extra amenities that you can get. Uh, we got the uh, Hulche, uh, however she said it, um, here that, uh, as you can see, we've already gone over that. And then the observatory. We actually get to see a little bit more detail about the bonuses from the observatory here. Plus two science bonus for every adjacent plantation and plus one science bonus for every two adjacent farm or district tiles. So the farms actually inherit the same bonus as a district tile does. What that means is you're going to be very early on be able to surround your observatories completely with either plantations or or farms or a combination of the two, I could see you settling near one or two plantations and then filling the rest of the spots with farms and very easily early game being able to get, what would that be? If you settle next to one plantation, that's two plus uh, the other five tiles. So that's five. Uh, I guess you would only get one for every two farms. So that's what, four adjacency right away, possibly going up to all the way up to, uh, if you had two plantations, that's four, four already. And then a pair of farms, uh, a couple a couple pairs of farms, I should say, that would get you up to what, uh, six maybe? So I could see four to six science bonus very easily for uh, for the Mayas uh, without having to worry about those districts. Because districts you don't get until your population grows and they take a while to build. And sometimes you may not want to put them right next to that observatory. You might have a better spot to give themselves their own adjacency. So this frees you from that restriction of having to place all of your districts next to your science observatory to be able to get a bonus there. And then just being able to put some relatively cheap farms down to get the extra bonus there. So like I said, four to six science, she's going to be someone who really wants to have that, um, the extra adjacency bonus, uh, civic so that she can get that doubled up to be able to be eight to 12 science. And that's going to snowball her so much in the early game, be able to get these things set up very, very early in the game. And uh, she's going to have the best adjacency for the first 50, 100, 150 turns, hands down. Uh, of any civilization in the game. That even includes Korea and some of their bonuses that they get for their adjacency. This is gonna be much better overall. Location, location, location. The key to your Maya empire will be creating a close-knit network of cities that maximizes the boosts gained by being near the capital. With a smaller area to work with, thinking ahead with city and observatory placement will be of utmost importance. With a boosted output in science, you can use your advanced military tech to take on your enemies stuck in the past. Will the world recognize the strength you already know you possess? How will you lead the Maya in Sid Meier's Civilization VI? So as we can guess, the Maya are gonna be an incredibly strong science civilization, especially in the early game. Civilizations like Scotland and Korea, who get like a flat percentage bonus to their science, they might start to uh, kind of get a little bit better in the late game than the Maya. Although Maya does get a continual 10% boost to their science the entire game as well, as long as their cities are within, you know, six tiles of their capital. So they get a similar type of bonus. It's a little bit 
uh, a different you know take on it. So they're going to be incredibly strong throughout the entire game. Uh, are they the best civilization for science now? Maybe. It's going to be kind of hard to tell. I think they're the best civilization in the early game, or at least one of the top two or three in the early game for science. They're going to be able to really set that foundation. And once you set a foundation and you start snowballing, it's really hard for any civilization, even Korea or, or uh, Scotland, to, to catch up sometimes in the late game. So I think Amaya is going to be an incredibly strong science civilization. Now, what can you do with that extra science? Pretty much anything. Strong science can really set you up for any of the victory types. Obviously, the science victory type is probably the one that jumps out at you the most. But you could also go for, like I said, a late game uh, or mid to late game uh, domination victory. You know, again, accepting the fact that your newly conquered cities are not going to be amazingly produced, you know, a, a, a produ producers, I should say. But uh, if you're snowballing that hard that, you know, at that point, you probably don't care. So I could definitely see domination, you know, any of the other victory types, culture or anything like that. I mean, religion. I mean, what's here for religion? Not really much here for religion, I suppose. Uh, there's some late game diplomacy stuff that could help you get a diplomatic victory, but uh, I definitely think science is going to be by and far their number one victory type. I'm really excited to play as Lamaya. I think these these look like a lot of fun. Uh, we still haven't seen Grand Columbia, which is also going to release at the exact same time as Lamaya does. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to see that video here in a few days, but uh, I'm already kind of leaning towards Lamaya as the one that just looks like a lot of fun to play as. So let me know what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about Lamaya, their bonuses. Um, which bonus do you think is the strongest? Which bonus do you think is the weakest? How do you think you're going to take advantage of those early science, you know, adjacencies and things of that nature? Also, let me know uh, what you think about the Frontier Pass. Uh, I do plan to put a, probably a, a Frontier Pass kind of review or, or kind of preview video out once we get a little bit closer, once we get a little bit more information, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think about it early on. And please, please, please let me uh, know if you like this video or dislike this video. That helps me know if you want me to see, you, know, you want to see more of these types of videos. But as always, I do appreciate you watching and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.